Self-styled offensive comedian Jimmy Carr has landed himself and Netflix in the public pillories with a joke on his stand-up special, His Dark Material. The show has been online for over a month without drawing any flack, but the offended brigade recently found and circulated a clip to make sure that nobody could miss out on the chance to be offended. When people talk about the Holocaust, they talk about the tragedy and horror of six million Jewish lives being lost to the Nazi war machine. But they never mention the thousands of gypsies that were killed by the Nazis. No one ever wants to talk about that because no one ever wants to talk about the positives. <laughs> Politicians and pundits have lined up to condemn what they commonly refer to as a joke in inverted commas, as if it's only allegedly a joke. Labour MP Zara Sultana took time out from appearing in a bran muffin to say that Carr was mocking racist genocide. Sultana herself previously came under fire for minimising the Holocaust and saying that she'd celebrate the death of Israeli leader Benjamin Netanyahu, but presumably it's bad when Jimmy Carr does it because he's a comedian so people take it seriously. Nadia Whittam ran to teach her, I've written urging Netflix to remove Jimmy Carr's vile anti-GRT and anti-Semitic material. Miss, miss, Jimmy said a bad word. Culture Secretary Nadine Dorries said, Well, that's not comedy. It's shocking and abhorrent and unacceptable, not just because he was making fun on the basis of people who died in the most appalling circumstances, but on the pain and suffering of many thousands of families. Mind you, she also thinks that Chukka Amuna looks like Chris Eubank, opposed gay marriage and thinks the majority of Tories are behind Boris Johnson. Nadine previously tweeted that left-wing snowflakes are killing comedy, tearing down historic statues, removing books from university, dumbing down panto, removing Christ from Christmas and suppressing free speech. I can only assume that she saw an opportunity for joyless right-wing harridans to get a piece of the cancel culture action by cancelling comedy. Dory's also raised the prospect of prosecution, saying, we don't have the ability now, legally, to hold Netflix to account for streaming that, but very shortly we will. She's since said that the government are looking at introducing a new media bill which will impose sanctions on streaming services and video on demand platforms for the kind of comments Jimmy Carr made. Bear in mind, they're not imposing sanctions on China, which is actually committing genocide as opposed to joking about genocide. Last year when I ran for the Reclaim Party to oppose the SNP's hate crime bill because it could make jokes illegal, people said I was crazy. Leo, do you really believe that comedy will be criminalised in Britain? Well, here we are. Pressure groups, including the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust, the Auschwitz Memorial and Hope Not Hate, saw an opportunity to get their name in the papers and probably won't be booking Jimmy to host their awards ceremonies. Even David Baddiel, who's previously defended contentious jokes such as Count Dankula's Nazi pug video, which re resulted in Dankula's prosecution, called Carr's joke cruel and inhumane and mean-spirited and racist, echoing the complaints made against Baddiel himself when he appeared on TV in blackface with a pineapple on his head. I mean, presumably the wardrobe department were unable to source a bone to put through his nose. Baddiel also used the anti-gypsy slur pikey on TV. And, you know, you look like a bit of a pikey, which I sort of do when I'm not lost. <laughs> He's since apologised and said that he did these things a long time ago when racism was okay. Are these pundits right? Was it in fact, as many said, not a joke? I mean, we can assume that it's meant as a joke because it's told by a comedian in a comedy show in the context of dozens of other similar jokes and broadcast in a show billed as a comedy special. Another clue that it's a joke is that it received a huge laugh from the audience who'd bought tickets to a comedy show by a comedian. As far as we can ascertain, they weren't attending a Nazi rally. To break the joke down, as many on Twitter and radio have asked me to do, which I've done with the success rate of someone trying to explain chess to a dolphin, like no joke is improved by dissection on a laboratory table. The joke is based on character and misdirection. Jimmy, playing the part, as usual, of the worst person in the world, brings up the issue of gypsies killed by the Nazis as a forgotten side note to the six million Jews killed in the Holocaust. We'd expect a normal person to say that nobody talks about the gypsies killed, because, perhaps because of societal prejudice against gypsies gypsies or their deaths are simply lost in the comparable huge scale of Jews killed. Jimmy, being the worst person in the world, says that it's actually because nobody wants to talk about the positives. It's obviously wrong. It's obviously not what Jimmy or anyone in the audience actually thinks. It doesn't diminish the Holocaust. It relies on the absolute horror and evil of the Holocaust for its impact and in doing so reinforces it and reminds us of it.
There's a rich heritage of the Holocaust being used as a subject for comedy by comedians from Louis C.K. to Mel Brooks. Often the jokes mock the Nazis. Humour has a great ability to deflate power, which is why authoritarian leaders kill the comedians first when they get into power, like the Taliban did with the Afghan comedian Fazal Mohammed last year. But there's also a long history of people making sick jokes about the Holocaust. For example, the classic, my granddad died in Auschwitz, he fell out of a machine gun tower. Similar to Jimmy Carr's joke, it wrongfoots the audience. When someone says that their grandparent died in Auschwitz, we expect them to mean as a victim rather than as a clumsy Nazi. It's a great joke. Far more damaging to the collective history of the Holocaust was Whoopi Goldberg's assertion that it wasn't about race. I mean, Hitler would disagree, but then what does Hitler know about Nazi ideology? What will the outcome be for Jimmy Carr and for comedy? I mean, unless he's prosecuted under hate speech laws, as Nadine Dorries hints at, Jimmy is unlikely to be cancelled in any meaningful sense. Netflix might edit or remove his special, but he might actually benefit from more fame and notoriety. The real impact will be on the ripples of self-censorship spreading out through the entertainment community. David Baddiel himself admitted in an interview that he self-censors now. Comics will second-guess their material and remove anything that could possibly be contentious. Broadcast execs will do the same, blandifying and homogenising our entertainment. It could also empower authorities to apply new authoritarian legislation, notably the Online Harms Bill and the Scottish Hate Crime Bill, to jokes. The problem jokes face when picked apart in court by people approaching them in bad faith is that they're shorn of delivery, context, nuance, character, irony, anything that can make them funny. They're taken at complete face value. There's no room for the concept that possibly, just maybe, just maybe the comedian might have been joking. Is that sometimes a possibility? To give an example of what our stultifying new world of comedy will look like, I've rewritten the joke so it's acceptable to Zara Sultana and Nadine Dorries. When people talk about the Holocaust, they talk about the tragedy and horror of six million Jewish lives being lost to the Nazi war machine, but they never mention the thousands of gypsies that were killed by the Nazis. This is because of systemic prejudice against Roma people and the travelling community, and long-standing inequities which have minimised the voices of the Roma people. I'm here all week, folks. Please try the veal. It's vegan.